In this video, we're going to look at the new and improved Quizlet.com and how it can help you bring educational games into the classroom as well as give teachers some formative assessment data. Here I am on Quizlet.com and I can click here in the upper right where it says study sets and search for just about any topic. And this can be elementary school, kindergarten, through college and beyond. After doing my search, Quizlet shows me three of the top study sets. In other words, flashcards is another way to think of these. But I can also click here where it says view all to see more than just the top three. And in most cases, there are hundreds of results or even thousands of results that you can sift through to find the perfect study set for you, whether you're a student or a teacher. If you have a textbook that you use in class, you can type in that textbook's name, and if you want, you can even put the chapter, and in almost every case, there already will be a study set created for that exact textbook and chapter that you need. Once you select a study set, it gives you digital flashcards for that study set. You can flip through the cards here. To flip the card over, just click on the card itself, and this is a way for students to practice the content, especially key vocabulary, for their classes. Now notice, after looking at a few cards, Quizlet is encouraging me to sign up for free to be able to access all of the cards. So I'm going to do that, and in my case, I'm going to sign up with Google. So I just click that button. It's linking to my Google account, and now I have a Quizlet account through my Google account. In addition to giving me flashcards to flip through and to use to memorize the content, Quizlet also gives me a list of activities and games that I can use with these vocabulary terms to help me learn them. Let's look at just a couple of these. One is spell. If I click that, it takes me to a dictation activity. I can click here to start the audio playback. El perro. And then here, I need to type what I heard. It tells me whether I'm correct or incorrect. Los padres. So this can be a great activity, especially for languages, including for improving spelling. There's also a couple of games. There's the gravity game and also a matching game. Let's look at the gravity game. We're going to protect the planet from incoming asteroids. There's different settings that you can choose and then just click let's go, start the game, and asteroids are headed to Earth. And unless I can type the correct answer, that asteroid's going to hit the Earth and it gives me the correct answer, which I then need to type in. Let's try another one. Okay, I got that one right. Okay, got that one right as well. And so this just adds an element of suspense to help students focus and try to get the answer before the planet is destroyed. There's also a button that you can click to turn these flashcards into a practice test. This is great for students. Let's say a test or quiz is coming up. They can pull the vocabulary from the textbook or from whatever topic they're studying. They can pull that information into an automatically generated practice test. And they can go through this test as a way to practice to see what areas of the material they need to study and review for the test. I'm going to go back. And I would encourage you to check out the other options here as well. These are also excellent options that you have in Quizlet. But Quizlet was recently updated to include a great new feature that I'd like to show you. And you'll find it here in Quizlet Live. Quizlet Live takes Quizlet to a whole other level. Most of Quizlet can be used by students on their own time, by themselves, as they practice the material that they need to learn for a class. But Quizlet Live, in most cases, is used with a whole class together competing or answering questions in a group. First, let's look at classic Quizlet Live. This has been around for a few years, but it's fantastic. With Quizlet Live, you can choose to still have the students participate on their own, just play the game the best they can by themselves, or you can sort the students into random teams. Let's do it that way. So I'll click on that. Next, as the teacher, I need to decide, do I want my students to have to answer in this case in Spanish, or do I want them to answer in English? I'm going to choose Spanish, but it doesn't matter really in this case. Next, it takes me to a screen where I'm waiting for at least four players, or students in this case, to sign in to this activity. Once they sign in, their names will appear here and we'll be able to create the game. Students join the activity by going to quizlet.live and typing in this code. Or they could just scan this QR code with a mobile device or other computer that has a QR reader. So let's try it as if I were a student. I've gone to quizlet.live and then I'll put in the code, click continue, I'll put in a name, and now, as a student, I can practice the vocabulary that will help me do well in this activity, 
And I can do that while I'm waiting for other people to sign in to the activity. Back in the teacher account, you can see that now Fred shows up as a player in this Quizlet Live game. Give me a minute to get three other students signed into the activity, and then I'll resume the video. Now that I have at least four players, I can click Create Game, and Quizlet Live has randomly put these four students into two teams. When I click Start Game, it shows the two teams and their progress. Now let's look at what the students see. This student sees the word pet and needs to find the Spanish word for pet. But the correct answer is not here in the list. The reason why is because this person has a teammate and on that teammate's device, you'll find the correct answer. So let's put the incorrect answer. The correct answer was la mascota. So we move on to the next question and it happens to be a repeat, and this time the correct answer is on the student's device. So we click the correct answer, and now we can move on. So the way this works is that each team is urgently looking at each other's devices, trying to find the correct answer. And sometimes the teams are only made up of two people, sometimes there's four people on the team, but they work together to identify the correct answer on any of their teammates' devices. Back in the teacher account, we can see that Los Pavos have taken the lead, and this will continue until one of the teams gets eight questions right. So that's how Quizlet Live, the classic version, works. But very recently, Quizlet has added another Quizlet Live activity. This is called Checkpoint. You can run a quick and fun formative assessment for your students. So I'll click on Checkpoint, and I have that same vocabulary list, the study set that I selected. If I don't want this particular study set, I could X out of this, go back, choose a different study set, and then go back to Quizlet Live and Checkpoint. But in my case, this is exactly what I want. And I have about 60 different terms, I believe, that I can choose from that are part of this study set. I need to select between six and 12 of the terms in this study set. So I can pick specific ones that my students need to work on or that I just want them to practice. It's also possible to just click the button that was here just a minute ago to randomly select 12 questions. And then I can adjust those questions, take some off, add some more if I want to. In this case, I'll just select the 12 that I want my students to practice and then I'll click Create. Now before I click Create, notice that there are some options. Basically, I can choose whether the students are answering with the term or the definition. In this case, I'll stick with term. You can also turn off the sound for the activity if you want, and then just click Create. And then similar to Quizlet Live, and at this point, similar to the classic Quizlet Live, I need to wait for at least two students to sign in to the activity. Now that that's been done, I can click Create Activity, and this is what the students are seeing as well as what the teacher is seeing. And the students get a definition in this case, and then they have to match it with the term that goes with it. So the correct answer is El Hermano. As the students put in their answers, those are recorded, and then the teacher at the front of the room, let's say, or on their own device, can see how many students got the correct answer and how many did not. I can click Continue. Let's look at it from the student's perspective. Here's the correct answer. Let's say I pick the wrong answer as a student. I get an encouraging comment, and it does show me the correct answer. After the last question is answered, we click Continue, and a leaderboard is generated. It tells me the average score, the highest score, etc. I also get a breakdown of each individual question and how we did as a class, so I can see what we need to work on, what we need to review and study more. So Quizlet really does give us, as teachers and as students, almost a comprehensive way to learn vocabulary and other information that has definite right and wrong answers. We can study those terms as simple flashcards or with individual activities or a practice test. And then we can also study them as a whole class through Quizlet Live by way of a couple of engaging games. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the thanks button below the video or supporting me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below this video.